Hello, everybody, and welcome back. I'm so glad that you could uh, join me here today. Um, from wherever you're tuning in, quarantined or otherwise, I'm wishing you all the best. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I did this mixed media embellished pour. Um, I started with a 20 inch by 30 inch cradled wood panel uh, with a couple coats of gesso. Um, and I'll show you what a cradled wood panel actually is a little later in the video in case you're not familiar with those. Uh, and I didn't have any real idea of what I was going to do when I started this. I just knew that it had been a couple of months since I would painted and I just kind of wanted to feel the flow of paint and, and uh, just try and get those creative juices going again. And I knew I wanted to go green. So I'm just slinging paint, ladies and gentlemen, just putting it on there. Like I said, no real direction. Didn't know what I was doing at all. Oh, if you're wondering, I'm using that resin spreading tool. I got mine from Art Resin. I took this screenshot from Amazon. Um, I love using it in, uh, in my fluid painting. Um, so yeah, just kind of making a mess. I'm pretty much expecting to have a fail because it's been so long since I've got to sit down and paint uh, that I just wanted to play in it. Um, in retrospect and in editing this video, and looking at what I got going here from this angle versus the angle I was working on it from, I kind of like it right here. If I would have noticed how cool those ribbons looked, I probably would have left it that way. But like so many times, I didn't leave it alone and I kept going um, and kept running that uh, spreading tool through the paint and adding more paint and go, go, go. I'm so addicted to those stripes and lines that that the resin spreading tool creates in the little cells and kind of the three-dimensional effect that it gives that I just kind of kept going with it. I noticed it was starting to look sort of nature-like, like leaves and plants and grass, something along those lines. So that's where I decided to keep going with it and this is where I decided to leave it to dry joked with my daughter that I was gonna name it bok choy. <laughs> so here it is dry and I need to get it varnished. Um, oh, here is what a cradled wood panel looks like. The whole thing is wood. The top panel, it's very lightweight, uh, nice and sturdy. So I need to get this varnished. I've decided to use this Gamvar gloss varnish. It's very fluid, um, almost like water. Uh, and the reason that I like using this is because it does not leave any brush lines. And uh, so this is the gloss. I do believe they have a satin as well. It's got a really sort of oily feel to it. Um, and it takes, it takes a little bit for a layer to dry. I put two coats on, one in the afternoon, one again before bed and woke up the next day to it completely dry, but it, it will have a little bit of a slight tacky feel to it um, for a day or so. Anyway, the next step here is to make our little swirly bejeweled wire pieces. And as you can see, I have a bunch of different sizes and colors and shapes of wire. I have some flat wires too. Uh, and different beads and stones and crystals and even some little pearls. So for this next part, for making our little swirly twirly wiry bits, we're going to need an uh, electric drill here. And I'm just going to cut some lengths of wire, all the same length, different colors here. And I'm going to use this real thin uh, this real thin one here is part of this because some of my beads and stones have really small holes in it. So I'm just going to kind of, I took the, the smallest wire, wrapped it around, and I'm just going to create kind of a little uh, end piece with the wire here so that I can put it down into the mechanics of the drill. And I'll show you here what I mean. Nothing particular, just something that'll be solid and that the drill can grab a hold of. I'm using my little 
needle nose uh, jewelry pliers here. All right. We're going to put that down in the drill, tighten it up around the wire. And then once we get that in there all nice and snug, we're going to take our beads and stones and sparkly little bits and pieces and get a bunch on one of these wires. Um, I used the smallest wire because like I said, some of my beads had some small, really tiny holes in them. Uh, you don't want to feel the length of the wire, I would say a third to a half at the most. And then you're going to take your little jewelry pliers or whatever pliers you have to hold onto this with, wrap that wire around there, and just spin it a couple little times and start pushing the beads up the wire because as it starts to twist, they'll start staying in place. Just kind of spread them out so that they they have some space here and there, and then once you get them all in place, you can go ahead and finish twisting the wire the rest of the way by just spinning the drill. And as you can see, pretty easy, but it it's a really lovely effect, I think. And now I'm going to take one of these flat wires, the copper one, and make it the same length and do the same thing all over again. Create a little knot on the bottom of that so we can get it into the drill. Just like so. And same thing. Grab a hold of that and give it a little twist. And that's what we're left with. And then of course you can bend it and shape it however you see fit. And for this project, I made four of these, two that had the flat green wire wrapped around and two that had the flat copper wire wrapped around. Different lengths. And uh, so once I got those all ready, then it was time to sort of figure out the arrangement. Oh, these are the drawer pools that I used for the butterflies. I got those at Hobby Lobby. So we're just gonna kind of eyeball this for a few minutes and figure out how we want it to look and sort of where we want our little butterflies to go. And I'm taking just kind of a little wax crayon here and making a little mark that'll easily wipe off because of the varnish uh, at the end points of each of these wires so that I know where my butterflies are going to go. And down here at the bottom where I'm going to have one larger hole where all the wires start from. And the next step was for me to find a drill bit that was about the same size as those drawer pulls and to create a place to to screw those drawer pulls into. Wanted to check and make sure it fit. Went on to the rest of them. Got them all screwed in and uh, a part that I didn't get to film was uh, where I actually attached the wire to those butterflies. It was really easy. I just kind of unwrapped the end of the wires or untwisted the end of those wires and then wrapped them around the base of the butterfly. Um, just like I'm kind of taking apart the these wires here. So same thing, wrapped them around the base of the butterfly and... Um, and then here I'm putting them down in through the, the wood panel and I will bend them on the back and I'll add a little epoxy glue just to keep them in place. And then the leftovers of the big, the big flat wires, I just curl up and try and make them look cute and pretty. And there we go. And in the end, these glass pieces, I will epoxy those on as well. 
And that pretty much is it, guys. I'm really happy with it. I think it's quite lovely. Um, it takes a minute. Like if you're looking at it from a distance, it actually looks a little messy because you got the the chunky wires going one direction and and you've got the the paint moving in its own direction. But when you're able to get up to it, you can really see uh, how lovely it is. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this video, you guys. Um, I certainly enjoyed making it. Hope you're doing well, staying safe, staying healthy. I am currently stuck at home. So, uh, so yeah, making some videos. Uh, please subscribe, comment, like. I am accepting tips right now because I have no income. Um, sending love to all of you.